Yo, 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 welcome back to Infinite Investors. I'm Curtis. Today, I'm going to do a video on my dividend stocks. I received a comment from The Real Nihan. Shout out to you about the dividend stocks that I hold and asking me to do an update on my dividend stock. So in today's video, I'm going to give you an update on my dividend stock holdings. I'm going to talk to you about what I like, what I dislike about them, my plans for them going forward. I'm going to tell you my target in terms of how much dividends I want to try and earn on an annual basis. And also, I'm going to show you where my portfolio is split between dividend and growth stocks and obviously how I'm going to change that over the next coming weeks, months and eventually years. So if you want to know more, like, comment, subscribe, help the channel get to 4k subscribers so we can get the world of investing out to more people in a clear, simple and transparent manner. But first, let's go update on my dividend stocks. Before I get into the actual stocks, if you have seen this screen before, then big up yourself. If you haven't seen this screen before, then I'm assuming you're new to the channel or you just haven't paid attention to probably what I think is the most important video that I've made in at least mm, the last six months. So basically, this is one of the slides in my 2020 vision. I talked a lot towards the tail end of last year about my 2020 vision, which is effectively my vision for 2020 when it comes to investments. What plans I've got, what's my criteria, what my goals are, how I'm going to try and achieve them, etc, etc. Now, one of the key components of my 2020 vision is having a dividend reinvestment strategy and allocating 40% of my portfolio purely to dividend stocks. I call myself a hybrid investor. There's a previous video that I've done talking about what type of investor are you? Are you dividend? Are you growth? Are you value investor? Contrarian, etc, etc. I last year would say that I was more of a value investor. This year, I'm definitely what I call, which is a brand new term. I've just made it up just, you know, because I'm like that. A hybrid investor where I'm hybrid of growth and dividend now obviously I've been adding a lot more growth to my portfolio but in times like this dividend stocks is where they actually and excuse the pun start to pay their dividends and the reason why I say times like this is that in times when your growth stocks are at all-time highs and people are worried about growth stocks correcting growth stocks starting to fall people starting to sell off is it too high a price to buy into Microsoft is it too high a price to buy into Tesla etc etc the people that should be the most happiest, the most calm, the most considered, the most chilled out throughout this whole period is dividend investors. When you have periods like coronavirus erupting the market or what's going on with the elections or what's going on with en with impeachment or um, um, anything, anything political or socio-economical, again, the people that should be the most chilled, the most happiest, the most calm is dividend investors because my perception of good dividend investors is that irrespective of whether the market's up or down, you continue to invest, you continue to scoop those dividends, reinvest those dividends and obviously hopefully compound your way to greater wealth and success over the long term. So in my strategy, I talked about, you know, the reason why I'm investing in dividends is the long term compounding effect. I'm going to be investing in UK value stocks, REITs, US quarterly and monthly stocks. I'm going to be dollar cost averaging into them. For those of you that don't know what dollar cost averaging is, it's basically putting in the same amount of money consistently on a monthly basis, but also any spare change investing. So if I do have some spare change, because free trade is free and I don't pay for any trades that I make, which is one of the significant benefits of using a commission free poker, then if I've got 30 quid, if I've got three quid, if I've got five quid, if I've got 70p, it goes back into the market B. I put that straight into the market and my whole goal is to increase shares and keep buying. And then I talk about what my investment criteria is in terms of dividend stocks. Now, what I will show you is this. I use Simply Wall Street to manage my portfolio. People have asked in my last live stream, why do you use Simply Wall Street? And one of the reasons is to manage my portfolio. But in section 10 of Simply Wall Street, what it shows you is all of your dividend stocks. It tells you your annual yield and what I think is really neat, your current annual contribution. So you can see at the moment that the stocks I hold are Imperial Brands, Taylor Wimpy, Aviva, Sentiment, Lloyds Banking Group, British Land, Barrett Developments, League and General, Vodafone, Land Securities Group, Microsoft and Apple. Now, Microsoft and Apple, they do pay a dividend, but as I said in my portfolio update when I purchased it, I consider Microsoft and Apple growth stocks just because of the nature of those tech stocks and what they're doing and how the share price has been moving. However, they do pay a dividend, so they obviously still do get a notable mention within this current video. But these are my dividend stocks, and one thing it tells you 
is that my total annual yield at the moment is 3.91%, which is equivalent to 12.33 per year. So the first thing that's important for me is this 12.33 per year. If that is my annual dividends that I currently get, the first thing I ask myself is what's my next target and how quickly can I try and achieve that? So my next goal is to try and get this 12.33 per year to become 2,000 pounds per year. If I can get 2,000 pounds in dividends per year, that's what, 35 pound a week, 40 pound a week, something along those lines. I think about 40 pounds a week. 40 pound a week for me at this current stage is fine. Obviously, I don't use the money. The money just gets reinvested anyway and I'll continue to do that on an ongoing basis. But the key thing for me is that I've been investing since December 2018. That is when I've started investing in this portfolio. So if I've been investing since De December 2018 and by the end of December 2020, I will get £2,000 in dividend payments, which will be my goal. Then I know that in 10 years, that will be £10,000. In 20 years, that will be £20,000 minimum. And I, I say minimum because if the market goes down, then I'll be buying a lot more. And if the market goes up, then obviously it goes up. But the whole goal for me is that I can continue to put the same amount that I'm putting in on an annual basis. And obviously there's going to be peaks and troughs over the coming you know, years. Who knows what the future is going to hold, but that's effectively going to be my goal. So one of the reasons why I use Simply Wall Street is that it tells me this figure, which is really nice. It also tells me the average yield, which is good. And as you can see, you know, I'm looking at an average yield of 3.5%. So I'm just above that. Now, if the yield was higher, it would be good. Like you see some of these yields, 11.2%, 8.1% for Taylor Wimpy, 7.3% for Aviva. Some of those look great, 11%. However, they can be a dividend trap because you can have a company that's not making any capital gains, that's losing you money on an ongoing basis. But obviously, the dividend yield is an inverse of the share price. If the share price is dropping, then the dividend yield is typically going to go up. And so it's going to look great, but you have to be careful. This is the reason why in my dividends video, I do mention to you, you have to look at a whole bunch of other factors, such as payout ratio, such as payment history, such as if they cover their yields and all of those other, the cover their dividend payments and all of those other factors as well. Because if you don't look at those other factors, you can fall into a payment trap. An example, which you talked about in the live stream would be something like B. So if I go to BT Group, which is obviously a well-known company in the UK that a lot of you guys know about, you can see that the share price continues to fall. If you include their returns over the last five years with dividends, even with dividends, you lose minus 53.6% of your portfolio. In three years, you would have lost minus 38.8% of your portfolio. In one year, you would have lost minus 26.5% of your portfolio. So it's really important that you don't buy dividend stocks that just have no capital gain appreciation whatsoever because you will just be losing your capital. And so even though you're getting potentially a good yield, and I bet you the dividend yield was high on B and I think we can find it and the dividend yield we'll see 9.92% you might think oh that's a great yield however because they're not earning any money from a capital gain standpoint and they're actually losing quite a significant amount of money you'll effectively lose more than you gain you'll never earn as much whereas if you think of a stock like Barrett which is a dividend stock that I currently hold and one of my favorite stocks you will find the complete opposite and this is where it becomes incredibly important because now you can see here seven days I've earned two percent capital gain 30 days 11.5 percent 90 days I earned 33.3 percent in one year with dividend than 64% in three years 106.1% and in five years 143.6% this is the capital gain return and then these last three years are capital gains with your dividends as well and if you look at the dividend yield here when it comes to Barrett you'll find that the dividend yield is 5.44% which seems like a really good safe dividend percentage to kind of be targeting for but anyway let's get back to giving an update on my particular dividend stock so you can see that Imperial Brands and Taylor Wimpy are pretty high. The bad thing about Imperial Brands is that Imperial Brands has been a very, very volatile stock. Now I talk about it a lot in my portfolio update. It's one of my biggest holdings. I'm gonna continue investing, continue averaging it down and continue holding it until it pays me back a return. I do think it's going to pay a return. One thing that I noticed recently on Imperial Brands, which is something that actually might be interesting for any of you guys that hold it, is that there's been a lot, a lot of insider buying 
activity. So when you look at the recent transactions from people within the organization, senior people within the organizations from the CEO down to other individuals on the board and so forth, you can see their buying activity. It's all public open information. And you can see from September 2019 to December 2019 to January, February, you know, as recent as the 12th of February, a lot of shares are being bought by insiders. So that for me is a sign that maybe they feel that it's quite undervalued at the moment and there's a profit to be made at some stage in the future. So I'm going to continue buying if the, ins buy -in. if the insiders are buying. There's no reason why I personally won't potentially be buying. Taylor Wimpy for me is a great house building stock. I've I've had a great capital gain return. I think Taylor Wimpy's return for me is about 33 some odd percent. Let me see. It's going to be here somewhere. Um, it's about 33 odd percent. It's been for me. And... Um, and you know here it goes ah oh, 46.69 percent according to, to simply wall street that's the contributors to my total return it's 46 oh no this is basically say uh, yeah 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 that's what it said um so so yeah it's been good for me from a return standpoint but also from a dividend standpoint it's done it's done pretty well so it's a stock that i'm definitely going to continue holding happy to hold aviva aviva i did consider selling to be honest now aviva pays a good dividend yield but from a capital gain standpoint it hasn't been that great it's not been as volatile as say the likes of bt um but aviva has been um not the best i would say not the best whereas something like legal in general has been a little bit better so you can see aviva minus 25 minus 80 minus 3.1 minus 4.3 0 0.21 in the last seven days which is meaningless but you can see that one year with dividends it actually did creep into positivity last three years don't really apply to me because i haven't been investing for that long and last five years still but overall you can see that the dividends has basically kept it so it's just kind of been an average stock um so that's okay it's not great but it's okay i've considered selling aviva and putting that money into legal in general just because i think they do behave similar but i do think that legal in general which is another dividend stock that i hold um actually has a better performance and you know you'll be able to see that here so when you look at the legal in general performance you can see that actually the returns are much different 0 0.3 3.6 15.2 17.3 26.8 and 15.5 over the five years but when you add dividends 25 percent for one year 51 percent for three years and 53.4 percent i think legal in general is a better run business i like the way they've diversified so much of their operation they sold off so much parts of their business that weren't profitable and i think they're just a better run organization in aviva so i have considered selling aviva and just putting all of that money into legal in general but at the moment i haven't gone and done that and i don't know when i'll do that but you know if that time comes then obviously you guys will be the first to know sentiments a stock that i'll continue to hold my gold mining stock plays a seven percent dividend at the moment that dividend some Sometimes you see it's like three or two percent when the market goes down you'll see that sentiment share price just rises dramatically like significantly we saw that last year um, and then obviously the dividend yield would effectively drop from that standpoint but at the moment I think it's a good stock Lloyd's Banking Group with the company I apparently work for so to speak 5.6% uh, and now Lloyd's is going to a quarterly dividend this year. So yeah, Lloyd's is definitely something I'm going to hold. I had Lloyd's Virgin Money and Barclays. I sold Barclays, as you guys know, put that into a growth stock. I'm going to keep Virgin Money. Although they stopped their annual dividend, I'm going to keep that anyway. I consider that a bit of a growth stock at the moment because it doesn't pay a dividend. And then obviously I'll continue with Lloyd's with its quarterly dividends over the course of the year. I own British Land, which is obviously one of the new REITs. Now I have that in my basic account because they don't allow REITs and ISAs. But, you know, shout out to the notorious Victorious W has been talking to Free Trade and you know what, hopefully we shall see REITs coming into ISIS soon. I really want to see that just because the there is a tax that you do receive on their property income distributions of 20% and if you have it in an ISA, then actually you won't pay that 20% tax but Free Trade will have to claim that money back through some other mechanism which they can't they don't have the ability to do at this current moment but hopefully that should be coming into the future but i will still continue to hold this however i did do a video on you know reits versus buy to let properties now 
this wasn't the purpose of the video, but one of the byproducts, the outcomes of the video showed that all of the REITs that's currently on the free trade platform, there are so many that play a better yield or have a better capital gain return as well. Some of the healthcare REITs and some of the, the storage REITs and so forth. So I do think that I probably will have a bit of a review on my REIT situation and actually decide whether I'm going to include more REITs into my portfolio. As you can see, you know, REITs is definitely important to me as I've put that here as one of the things I want to continue to invested in so that's something that we're definitely going to be taking a look at now after that you've got Barrett Development Barrett Development I think is one of my greatest stocks particularly from a capital gain standpoint so that will continue to be here they've just released guidance saying that they're going to be profitable um, not profitable they already are profitable they're going to beat their targets by the end of this year so they're hopefully they're going to continue to go from strength to strength so that's definitely something I want to hold Legal and General we just kind of spoke about with Aviva I have considered selling my Aviva shares and put it into Legal and General I think they're a really good run group um, and we just spoke about I just showed you a bit of an example as to why they're, they're so good Vodafone is a dividend stock that they just pay me a 27 pound 11p dividend I just put that in my last portfolio update Vodafone is a stock that I bought because of 5G I'll be honest I bought last year because of 5G they were meant to be the first UK business to launch 5G and I thought that's going to have a really good impact on their share price their share price has been pretty volatile they had the tower co situation which caused their share price to rocket um, at one stage towards last year but they've kind of petered out listen over the recent period they haven't been too bad 15.4% over the last year minus 4.3 in the last night but in the last year I've still made a return it's not been that bad um, they were a little bit worse before but um, I will probably do some analysis on Vodafone I still think it's a good buy and a good potential stock to hold um, but I will probably do some analysis and see actually you know what can the money in Vodafone be put to better use so that is probably one that I might you know just 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 have a little bit of a you know have a little gander and just see what's the situation there land security similar to my british land is just another REIT that i hold um and a REIT that i'm yeah i'm pretty happy with at the moment 4.6 percent yield at the moment and um similar to the whole british land situation that i just mentioned i will probably have a REIT review REIT view that's what i'm calling it a REIT view which is a REIT review and effectively i'm just going to be looking at all of my REITs and being like what's up which ones are the best ones to hold which ones do free trade currently hold and which ones should i incorporate or maybe sell within a portfolio that's something i'm potentially going to look at and then obviously you've got microsoft and apple which pay like a really really small yield but i don't look at them as a dividend stock i look at them more as a as a as a growth stock and also, just because, you know, a 0.9% dividend yield, you can actually get more in a, in a savers account, maybe, depending on which type of savers account. So I don't care about the dividend for Apple or Microsoft. They will come through. They will get reinvested. It will be very, very small, as you can see from the values here. But it's not something that's going to, you know, be my main focus. I'm just worried about the growth. And these are stocks that, you know, in 10, 12, 20 years, 10, 12 years, they might they might still be here. They probably still will be here as companies. So, you know, what's the share price going to look like over that time period? Now, one thing I want to show you here, which is really interesting, well, to me anyway, and hopefully to any of you guys that find it interesting, is these are the current stocks that I hold. And this is the current value of each of my stock holdings. And then I did a little calculation just to basically work out, okay, what how what percentage is in dividends and what percentage is in growth? So as you can see recently, you know, since about the November time, I started to acquire a lot more growth stocks. Shopify and AMD were my first two buyers. I already had for Solar earlier on in the year. Um and yeah, that's a different. That's a stock that I might have to, you know, relook into into whether I'm going to continue holding. But anyway, let's bypass that one. I bought PayPal, Okta, Uber, Apple, and Microsoft, and I'm putting Virgin Money now in there just because they don't pay a dividend. And based off these holdings at the moment, currently 40% of my money is in growth stocks, and 60% of my money is in dividend stocks. So. I actually need to reverse that slightly because I wanted 40% to be in dividend stocks and 50 to 60%, depending on if you take much notice to the crip and the other pillar, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch the 2020 vision video. The link will be in the description would be in, in basically those investments. Now I still want to have more exposure to growth. Personally, I want my money to work a little bit harder for me. Um, I just hit the 4,000 profit mark. And now I think I'm at like 4,700, I think. So growth stocks have just been killing it right now. Uber has been killing it. Shopify has been killing it. They had some great earnings. A lot of my growth stocks have been doing really, really well. And I think that trend will continue. So I do like the growth stocks that I'm picking. 
in. I do have some more on my watch list that I want to continue to buy and invest into. And I do want my money to work harder. And if it means I just have to sell at the end of the year and put the profits all into dividend stocks, then that's something that I'm potentially going to do. But at the moment, 60% is in my dividend stocks. But if we go back to here, as I mentioned, the key thing for me is to try and invest as much as possible to get this figure to 2000. If I get this figure to 2000, then I will roughly start to be aware of how much I need to be putting in. I mean, I could probably work it out now anyway, but I'd rather just do it from the 2000 mark. I can then work out how much I need to be putting in in order to get another 1000 every year on top in dividend payments, dividend reinvestments and so forth and so forth. So yeah, these are the current dividend stocks that I hold at the moment. Do not consider this financial advice that you should buy any of these stocks. As I've mentioned, I bought some stocks. They've not done that well. I don't generally don't sell stocks at a loss because you guys know that I average it down until it's like 0% or 1% or 2% and I just sell it off at that point. But it's not something I recommend for everyone because you might be trying to average down a really, really bad stock. So yeah, don't, don't look at this as an advice into any of these stocks. But I would say the important thing for you guys to take away is that when you are looking at your stocks, have a criteria. Mine at the moment for dividend stocks is a 3.5% yield, a 35 to 55% payout ratio. And for five years that they've consistently been raising their dividends, that's really important factors to me. One thing as well is that their capital gains is still going up. I don't want a stock that has a good dividend and the capital gains just continues to drop that's really something that I'm not interested in um, and so those are the factors that are important to me so have your dividend criteria your different factors that are important to you you know find those dividend stocks um, and then obviously hopefully you can start to compound your way to wealth hope you found this video useful if you did like comment subscribe and I will catch you next time with another investment video